Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. So <laughs> uh, we're very happy and excited to be here this evening uh, to tell you about what uh, trash or treasure means to us. Um, another quick introduction to ourselves, following on from Renee's, is uh, that I'm Sam. This is my wifey, Victor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you. And we met a few years ago now in a hotel in England next to the vacuum packing machine. And uh, our love just uh, grew from there. Yeah. It's truly flourished. Um, it was an amazing time, um, but things got a bit intense in the kitchen in the end. So I felt um, I missed Scandinavia. So I moved to, to Denmark in Copenhagen. And I started to work at Norma. It was great. And, but I did realize, though, that soon after coming there, there was just too much asparagus to peel. There was just seaweed everywhere. And I couldn't find enough freaking chickweed to pick them on. So I needed Sam back in my life. So I convinced him to move back to, uh, to Denmark. So by that time, we'd had about six years uh, together, living in close uh, quarters, working yeah. together. Uh, we decided uh, it was the time for the next step in our relationship, and we decided it was time to move in together. Uh, we found uh, our dream home here in the heart of Copenhagen, and uh, that's where we opened uh, our restaurant just under two years ago. So just like Renee said, we, we started this project with very limited resources. Um, and with this, we had to be creative and really value what other people would consider trash. Uh, so for, for example, the, we wanted a, a very nice looking dining room. So we went urban foraging. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and found all sorts of things. Uh, also, we, we often call up uh, friends and old colleagues and say, hey, have you got any, anything you're going to throw out or not going to use or put on the menu? And that could be bags of cauliflower stems and also sometimes we missed, uh, we missed an extra chef for the dinner service. We didn't have the, the staff we needed, so it could look like that. <laughs> and it did also. Um, we, of course, also needed an office. Um, and we had a tiny little room at Broad, which we turned into an office. But the problem was it was already made into a toilet, a changing room, and a shower. <laughs> so we just had to make it work. So this was the mentality we had when we uh, started the restaurant, when we started setting up. And it just uh, felt natural to incorporate that into our style of cooking uh, when we were working out what type of food we were going to serve in the restaurants. So if we ordered a fish, we would use the whole thing, the head, the bones, the flesh, the skin, the liver, and the sperm. Um, and we kind of started thinking, we realized uh, when you're a chef in a busy kitchen, it's uh, very difficult to see the true extent of the waste that's uh, happening around you. You can see the obvious things, the meat trimmings on your cutting boards, and all the things that you're preparing. But what happened to the rest of the animal before this uh, piece of meat arrived uh, at your restaurants? Uh, you were never taught in school what happened to the, to the head or the balls or the penis of the animal. And um, we were curious about this and we wanted to work with these products. Um, we felt there was something new to us. And uh, we, did, uh, we did some research and, and see what would they, if they were not used for, for food and, and to eating, where, where would they end up? Often they could be um, turned into to pet food or um, cosmetics and all sorts of things. Also, they used to be farmers. They used to dry, for example, this ox penis. They used to dry it. And they would use it as a whip to control the animals on the farm. So uh, maybe that's what René has in mind for his chefs there. Um, but all these, these parts that we hadn't seen, we really wanted to, to work with them. And it, it be, became a, a challenge, a creative challenge to... Uh, to um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to, to turn them into something that would be delicious in a context that would suit our menu, you know? And uh, as you can see here, we have a, a lamb's head. Let's get cracking. Um, yeah. So we're going to demonstrate a, a serving that we do, and hopefully, no one will get hurt. <laughs> um, so. Um, we worked with uh, just a few small farms uh, for these lambs. Uh, we found them in the uh, south of Sweden, in Skåne. Uh, and they, they would only butcher 30 to 50 animals a year. Uh, so it was, we didn't always get enough, so we, we took what we could get. And uh, 
They'll be around six months up to a year old and uh, weigh around 40 kilos when they were transported into the slaughterhouse and then um, left there overnight because they wouldn't want to stress the animal anymore after the transportation. And uh, for this survey, we wanted to use the brain, uh, the eyes, the cheek and the tongue and uh, we would make a stock out of the bones that were left in the head. Uh, but in order to do this, uh, they are halal butchered, so there's no uh, bullet gun used, so there will be any... Um, the brain is intact, because if you would use a bullet gun, it would go into the head, and there would be lots of bone splinters everywhere. And like I said, we wanted to make sure everything was used. So the head comes to the restaurant, and then we uh, marinate it with oil and salt and some sort of herbs normally. Maybe ramsons at this time of year would be good. Um, and we salt it overnight. Uh, the next day we cook it in the, the pot of water for between two and three hours, depending on the size, till the cheeks are nice and tender. And then you crack it open, um, and you can scoop out the brain. And then we pass it through a, a fine sieve, so it's nice and smooth. So we try to take things that look horrible and make them look a little nicer. That's going to beep again. <laughs> and then uh, we whip the brain. Um, just to add a little air, so it's a little bit lighter. And then we season it with salt and uh, some sweated shallots. And for the serving, we pipe it onto this uh, flatbread. It's normally easier when you're not shaking so much. And then uh, we season it on top with some uh, fermented cauliflower stems. And <laughs> if I can get this on top of the bread, uh, some of last uh, year's pine shoots. Um, and these are coming out to the bar in a second uh, when we go to a break, so you can all have a little taste of them as well. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, I'll say this, right? Huh? So I'll say this. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, we, um, we tried a few different versions out first. Uh, it was new to us, it was new to our guests. The first version was just here's a pot with a lamb head in. Eat it. It was, unless you were a chef, it was a bit tricky. It was just, it was a bit hard. So, it could be lots of guests that were not scared, but they were a bit nervous, thinking, oh, what is this? I want maybe something more I can relate to. Of course, it could be because, like we said before, this is not often used in this part of the world where we live. Um, but we convinced them and we tried and we developed uh, the serving and um, and then by then when they tried an eye or an testicle or or this uh, other things that we used this lamb head for they would be happy and that's a very rewarding part of our job to um, to hear the feedback and say yeah it was delicious and tasty and funny and interesting and that's became our treasure. So I think it's going to a break in a second, but uh, one last thing. So you have a little snack for the break. Uh, our head chef, uh, Jakob, has been uh, playing around with ox penises for a little while now. Maybe a little bit too long. <laughs> and uh, his uh, latest project is uh, taped uh, underneath your chairs. So if you just grab them, and you'll find out that you've been sitting on our crispy dicks for the last two hours. So I hope it wasn't too uncomfortable. Thank you very Thank much, you. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.